Now I've just popped out to the shed to uh, recharge some batteries. Um, if your house is anything like mine at this time of year, there's lots of pound shop LED lamps and lights around the house celebrating Christmas and they go through batteries quite a lot. Um, and what I thought is, I've not actually shown anybody this uh, smart charger, this battery charger that I use in the shed. And there's a very good reason why I use it in the shed. Um, the input is 12 volts, so I can charge AA batteries and AAA batteries from my solar power installation in the shed. It's also on this model, as you see, got a USB output um, on there as well, so you can charge your mobile phone at the same time. Um, let me just move that so that you can see the screen properly. So it's a really good charger, I'm really pleased with it. It's um, a branded seven day shop, um, but it's based on the, um, I think it's the Technoline BL700. They're also selling this version now under various names, Lacrosse and Yoshiko. Um, but this is my version uh, from seven day shop. Um, and the reason why I went for the one from seven day shop was it was considerably cheaper than the others. Um, I think this was 20 pounds and the other ones um, that I've seen were 30 pounds upwards. Um, so it's a decent charger. So as I said, it plugs in with 12 volts and it shows up, no batteries in there at the moment. And you pop a battery in and the first thing it does, reads the voltage of the battery it's in charge mode and 200 milliamps by default and that will just flash and then it's charging. As I add another battery in, we can go through the modes here. So if I choose that cell and we can charge, we can discharge, we can refresh the battery which discharges it and, refresh, and charges it again uh, a number of times. Or we can do a charge test where it actually works out how many milliamps can be stored in the battery. And it's gone and done that. Put it back in. So again, I'm going to leave that one to charge. But as you'll notice, what's really good about this charger is you can charge a single cell and you can change the options for each one. So for example, if I plug this one in and choose that cell, I can decide to charge this one at 500 milliamps, where the others are charging at 200 milliamps. And that's really useful if you need some batteries quicker than others, um, and you're not too worried about um, an aggressive charge, I guess, on some of your batteries. So some of my older batteries I might give an aggressive charge to because they're almost ready for the bin, but my newer batteries I might charge slowly to hopefully prolong the life. I also use these seven day shop batteries um, because they're fairly cheap. They are LSD batteries, um, so that's low self discharge. Once I've charged them, they can sit in the drawer for a while um, before I use them without discharging. So I'm really pleased. It's a great charger. I charge it off my um, solar batteries and therefore I get free charging my batteries. But one of the things you'll notice is I'm using this little voltage regulator here. Now, somebody did ask a question about this. I'm going to just check, disconnect that. This is a SEPIC DC to DC converter. That means it can boost as well as book the voltage. So it can, um, on the output, we can have voltages higher and lower than the input. Um, let me just see if I can demonstrate that. So everything's a bit finely balanced, but I'll try and do this without uh, mucking everything up. So as you can see there on the right hand side, my battery in the shed is at about 12.4 volts. And the output of the SEPIC converter is at 12 volts, that's on the left. Um, so we can adjust the output to anything below and above the battery. But what's really nice is as the battery changes voltage, which you can see on the right hand side now, as I just adjust another SEPIC converter, so below the output voltage, 
I can go down quite a long way if I wanted to, but that would take some time. And as I bring that voltage back up again and go past that 12 volts, this doesn't move a muscle. So as my battery charges and discharges, I know that the output from this separate converter will always remain the same. And that's really useful. So the reason why I do that is that the manual says, you know, you've got to use the original supplied adapter, as does the back of the unit itself. Um, now, here is that original adapter, um, and it's 12 volts, 1.5 amps, positive on the centre. Um, but other than that, it's nothing out of the ordinary. Let's plug it in and see what we get out of it. So it's 12.3 volts. Well, that's not too far away from where my battery is now, which I believe is about 12 and a half. Let's just test it. Well, 12.6. I'm going to risk it. So earlier, I think I mentioned that this red um, adapter, positive yeah, center, is connected directly to my battery. So let's plug it in. Well, it's powered up. Let's plug a battery in. Uh, yeah, that one in there. This was the one I was doing for 500 milliamps. There we go. One of those. Let's leave those as standard. So, no smoke, no fire. It seems to work fine on 12.5 volts. Um, I'll have to see if I'm going to use it when the batteries are charging during the day and it's at 13.5, 13.8 volts. We'll have to see. Perhaps I won't trust it quite then. But for the moment, at least at night, which is, well, it seems to be all the time at the moment in December, I can plug that straight into my battery, not bother with this epic converter, and it's charging my batteries fine. So as the voltages come up on those batteries. I think it's a great way of using the power I'm generating in the shed back in the house in remote controls, lights, uh, those sort of things. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video and also about finding out about the SEPIC converter. Please give us a thumbs up if you can, subscribe down below and your comments are always appreciated. Thanks for watching.